Hey everybody, this is Locks with My Electric, and today I'm going to show you a couple of simple little tweaks that will make your clips look a lot better in Sony Vegas. Go ahead and get the application open here. I'm going to be pulling in several clips here from GTA. I'm going to select the first clip there, select the bottom clip, and I'm going to pull them all in. We can see that clips will be separated as I pull them in. And we got some weird artifacting. Looks like it's happening here in the uh, in the preview. Looks like I got them all in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and just work with a couple of these here. I'm holding down the shift key right now just to select all those clips to move them aside. And right now we're just going to look at this one. One thing that you may notice in a lot of people's YouTube videos, I know that I've seen this before and let's say a... Uh, like a white boy video, for example. You may notice that you get some weird ghosting with uh, with images here. You may notice that uh, it has like a, a transparency effect and you can tell that this piece right here is actually this piece right here. It's actually blending a couple of frames together. Well, it's, it's really not, you know, the kind of um, motion blur that you're really going after. I don't use this for a motion blur. This is, this is ugly as hell to me. So I'm gonna show you basically how to get rid of that and it's very simple so this is an example of it looking really bad I'm gonna right click go to properties and this little option right here you want to make sure that disable resample is ticked and look this way you get a nice clear picture it's not trying to blend frames together Sony Vegas assumes that you don't want to lose any frame data um, if basically your source clip doesn't match uh, the the project settings in Sony Vegas. So probably what happens with uh, a lot of YouTubers is that they're capturing they're capturing they're capturing something on their PVR and then they're pulling into a project that actually has different uh, frame settings. So it, Vegas is trying to resample it. Well, you can either change uh, Vegas's uh, properties to match. Um, the frame rate of your source and normally you can tell see this frame rate is 30 and actually this source frame rate is 30 but I I basically simulated a higher frame rate by increasing the speed on this on this clip but if you wanted to know what your source media was running at you just go into the media and it should say right here like if I you can even adjust it right there if you want to but uh, you want to go ahead and use whatever is specified here generally or you want to go ahead and capture whatever frame rate you're planning on editing in. So disable resample is a huge thing. It's already going to make your video look way better because it's not, it doesn't have any weird ghosting effects. I mean, that's not motion blur. You know, if you're looking for a, a quality motion blur, you need to load up After Effects. But Sony assumes that for most people, uh, you, you don't want to lose your frame data. You know, like it's a, it's a horrible thing. If you've already pulled in numerous clips and you've edited your project and then you realize at the last minute, oh crap, I forgot to disable resample, it can be a freaking pain in the ass to go in, right click all these clips and choose disable resample. Believe me, I've actually done it before. It's freaking ridiculous, but you know, you, you live and you learn and later on down the road, I figured out a lot easier way to do it. So click your first clip in the timeline here, scroll down. Hold the down the shift key, click the very last clip, and you have all your videos selected. Now, what you can do is right click, choose switches, and then choose to disable resample. And that will disable resample on all these clips here. You can go in, look at this one randomly just to test it, and you'll see that resample is now disabled. That will save you some time. Okay, so that's one thing. We got disable resample set. Uh, the other thing we want to do is if you have several uh, clips that have uh, a similar coloring, let's say I had like a bunch of nighttime clips like this. And I mean, this this looks kind of drab right here. And a lot of my color effects I do do in After Effects. But let's say that you had several clips that, that were of this coloring. Um, what you would want to do is, uh, rather than adjusting, you can add effects to a clip by clicking that little icon there. And you can add effects directly to the clip. So I can add brightness, and once it's populated with a little brightness effect, you can see it right there. Well, if you're doing this on several clips, you actually don't want to apply it there. You want to apply it to the track. So 
I'm going to things that I com I will commonly use are brightness. And Sony HSL, I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. And then uh, I'll use a sharpen. On this particular source footage, it's actually old. Back then I was capturing at uh, 960 by 540. And I think this project is um, 1080p. Something I, I've noticed after using Sony Vegas for a very long time is that whether or not you use, and I don't know if you can tell in this video, whether or not you use any sharpen on it whatsoever, trim that all the way down, it would still apply a slight bit of sharpen. At least it was very prevalent in Sony Vegas 8. So what I would normally do is just add sharpen and just put it all the way down. It would just add just enough sharpen. So that will make my video look a little bit uh, uh, obviously sharper on the final render. Otherwise it would look blurry because I'm scaling up 960 by 540 to 1920 by 1080 p So we're going to add a little bit of sharpen there. And, you know, I would say, you know, really play around with these so you can see what's actually happening with your video over there. Brightness and contrast. I'll use brightness and contrast or levels. Brightness and contrast, if you're starting out, might be the easiest just because it's got a couple of sliders on it. Um, so normally I'll bump up my brightness, add some contrast on there. Makes it look a little bit more... Uh, theatrical you know that might be a little bit too much contrast bump it down a little bit it's cool and really that's not bad right there uh, normally I would go in and and I, I use the HSL adjust actually to adjust the saturation because it's very easy in here you can just add a little bit and you get a lot more color to a video it looks a lot more vibrant now if you want to see the difference you can always go to bypass all and then you'll see, you know, your normal clip looks pretty, pretty drab there. Once you turn this on, you get a lot more pop. So that looks pretty good. Like I said, sometimes you don't really need to make a lot of drastic changes here. But, you know, if you move to a different clip, it may not look quite the same. Because, you know, that actually looks pretty damn good. Bypass all. Little drab. Enable all. You know, it might be a little bit too vibrant. You can use split view up here to really see the difference between the way your video looks also, which is kind of cool. But uh, yeah, that's just a couple of s simple little options that will make your video look uh, quite a bit cleaner. Really, I think the most important of these is going to be, uh, looks a lot like Hillary Clinton, is going to be the disable resample. You know, I think that that really muddies up a lot of videos that are on YouTube and just making that simple change can really make your videos look a lot better. So I hope that this video has been helpful to you. Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for future tutorials right here on Myoelectric. See ya.